Hi guys, it's Aura. Welcome to the channel. So I wanted to do some Kundalini Yoga uh, mantras with you guys. I'm not sure how much space I'll be allowed on my phone. Um, and happy new moon in Leo to everyone. Um, it's a really cool one. We've got the moon, the sun, of course, because that's what makes it a dark moon, right? And then we have Mercury in Leo right now. And um, if you guys have followed me for a little while, my 100 subscribers, who will probably five do. <laughs> it's funny, I um, painted a painting last night and it's uh here, I'll show you. I don't know if you can make it out. It's really pretty. My camera's kind of crappy. I'm excited. I'm getting another iPad tomorrow. But it says, I have a dream that one day we will be judged by the content of our character, not by the number of our IG followers. <laughs> I get triggered with some stuff, man. Trigger. I love the sparkles though. Um, and not only just that, like seriously, we gotta like, it becomes distracting and we lose focus on, I understand being able to make an influence in that way, but I, I, you know, and that must make the difference between the big dogs and the small dogs and how many people you're able to influence, but it can get carried away big time. Anyway, if you followed me for a little while, you know that I um, followed the Leo King, who's the most amazing astrologer I feel, honestly. He's helped me greatly along my path, and um, he just did a big rant about people stealing his content, and um, honestly, I used to do that. I would actually go on his page and get followers and stuff, because I didn't have my own, like, um, network or anything, you know, but... Um, I just like to state my truth and be honest, but always, always I would give him credit and I find it really odd. This is way too hot. Excuse my shirts. Um, and this one's a little too low, which is why I put this on. It's way too hot. Here, I'll just tie a little thing around it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, like give people credit, especially in the spiritual community. Like, why are we not giving credit? Like, why are we not doing that naturally? It's just like awesomeness, but that's because everyone's different and everyone's focus is in a different place. And that's another reason I love astrology because it shows that it helps us to understand people, you know, um, examples, moon and Aquarius are more likely to not give a shit about money and, um, relationships as much as like a moon in Libra or a moon in Taurus type person, you know, so anyway, everyone's different and astrology can just show the ingredients to that. Um, it can also help with what we're going through, um, with like the current transits where they're at and what we're going through. But, um, so yeah, it is a new moon, a dark moon in Leo. Leo's the fixed fire. It's the sign of our heart space. It is our soul, the only sign ruled by the sun. And um, the sun is the soul, S-O-L. It is the light that gives everything light here on earth. Um, a good practice is to sun gaze in the early hours and in the golden hour. And, um, and my hair looks weird. It was, I guess I'll put it back up. Put it up. Um, so yeah, new moon, um, starts dark and then it's going to build up, you know, um, one thing that the Leo King went over with this new moon, and this is the kind of stuff that sets him apart from, um, like people that know a shit ton like myself of astrology, but don't even get the edge of what this dude can see. It's incredible. Um, but this is somehow going back to like August of 2017. I mean, I don't know if it was specifically August, but um, I think so. Well, I guess so, because the Leo. And so I've been all day, because he suggested last night on Deep Astrology, which is a YouTube thing he does, and 
if you get on his app, which um, is awesome, you get a whole other thing of content from all of his creators. It's high by TV, definitely worth it. Very cheap, very low cost. And this kind of astrologer is very valuable in that um, literally it helps you connect to the natural world, not to all this false stuff being opposed on us. And there's so many like Instagram astrologers and that kind of thing that are... Um, they just don't have the knowledge and they're like going to his stuff, you know, and then um, using it and like, it's not really right or fair, you know what I mean? Like, it's cool, it's fine because the message can get out and reach more people because that's what it's about. But like, give the credit where it's due, you know what I mean? Like, because without the ones that are actually knowledgeable to see this shit, how would any of us know? Give the credit, you know. But um, so new moons are good a good time to start new um, new new regimens, you know, depending on where it's at. That's like a basic type of oh type of reading, you know. Every new moon, it's good to start new things, and it's just basic because it's like the new moon is gonna build, you know. So it's a very basic thing with astrology. But I always like start think that people don't know it, so I kind of start with the basic stuff or whatever because they don't, <laughs> like they don't. I can't wait to publish like a a moon sign book. That was one of my first projects that I created around that time of August of 2017. So whatever kind of work you were doing, if you're in this kind of um, thing, three years ago. What he was saying in Deep Astrology is it's a good idea to look back on those things and to be grateful for how far we've come in those three years of finding our true self and soul again. And, you know, my awakening started in 2014 and 2015 I came across his astrology and that really helped get things moving. And um, by 2016, I remember creating Divinely Genuine which I'm currently logged out of my Instagram, so I had to restart it and, you know, starting to get back with my um, website and all of that as I'm learning to more embody my chart versus just like, oh, cool, and pass it on, you know, so it's, it's a really good tool to embody, to understand your energy and soul's purpose for why we came here. There's so much we can see in astrology and use and definitely even when I look at my astrology I still have not as much knowledge not even compared to someone like the Leah King who is a true astrologer it feels very weird to even call myself astrologer but you know how do you gauge it like there's a definite difference but like what do you say because the average bird doesn't know shit you know which is why for myself, I was so willing to like give it away, give it away, give it away. It's just like people need this info um, because it, it, it brings us to the natural energy, our authentic selves, our divinely genuine selves, right? Versus like the programming being, being offered to us because we do get to choose our programming, right? But the society's programming of, you know, just here's this box. Why don't you fit in here, you know? And in which everything, it's like, if it resonates, then it resonates. But um, astrology is it's just the natural energies um, that we embody, like our birth chart that creates our character. And the natural influences that are always happening, influencing, you know, making choices. Like when I moved to California, I knew it was a good time to move based on the astrology of my chart. And then it was intuitively a thing, too. You know, so anyway, um, so yeah, base, the basic level for a new moon is, you know, whatever you start right now, the energy of the moon as the moon builds from a black moon to a full moon, you'll have that energy with it. The moon is ever so changing though, so you really want to link up to where it's at in your chart and, um, you know, and go and follow it, you know, like that. But um, just as the moon rules the emotions, we don't want to put too much emphasis on the moon, honestly. Like, it is important, of course. It's goddess energy, controls the emotions, but they're ever-changing, and that's a lunatic, right? So it's way um, more important to look at the things that are 
there for a while, like the sun representing our outer expression and what we do and our inner fire of the soul. And that staying in one place, you know, not one place because it's moving gradually the degrees, but it's staying in one sign for a month, right? And that's how we get the horoscopes. Um, I was going to do mantras. Apparently, I'm doing a new moon video. <laughs> I don't think it'll give me much time. It cut off this morning at like 10 minutes, and yesterday it was 20. So, I don't know. I deleted some stuff. But, um, so yes, whatever you decide to start, it's a good idea to look at your chart or get a reading done, you know. I offer readings. I offer a natal chart reading, and then I do current transits. Um... It, the Leo King does, you know, high vibe. The high vibe app is like so inexpensive and you get legit astrology, legit astrology. I'm telling you, like for so cheap, it's, it's crazy. He almost gives it away, you know, but thankfully does because, you know, people like myself who aren't really, um, that good with like, um, saving money. <laughs> no, I'm abundant. I save more every day. Um, can't afford it though, so it's all good. It's available to everyone. But um, yeah, it's a good idea to link with where that new moon is happening in your sign. So then throughout the month or throughout the next two weeks, as it builds to the full moon, you can understand what this is asking you to do in conjunction to the sun in Leo right now, right? And where everything else is, so good stuff I like it obviously I dig it and um, yeah the big one with this one well it's just all the same stuff you know we have all this energy in Capricorn which is really tearing down the structures and rebuilding the structures and um, having to do with government having to do with corporations We've got Uranus that just went retrograde in Taurus. And um, it's almost hard for me to tell astrology right now because I, I just, I think of the whole chart and you need to know where it's happening, like what part of your chart it's happening. It's super important to know the birth time, to know your ascendant, to be able to figure that out. Um, there's a lot you can go by without it, but yeah. And so, um, you're on this retrograde in Taurus. Um, to me, that is um, all retrograde planets. We have a lot of retrograde planets right now. They're all digging in deeper and because they're not moving forward and they're just digging that energy in and really causing us, being that these are the energy that influence Earth, which influence the beings on Earth, um, causing us to dig in for what they represent, okay? So Uranus, number one thing would be inno innovativeness, you know? It's an Aquarius, it rules Aquarius, which you could think of like Einstein. Um, it's our ability to innovate, to think independently, to, um, it comes in bright, blue, rebellious, ready for change, okay? And having it in Taurus is that's a practical, how can we feel better? Taurus wants to feel good. It, it in a shadow side, can become greedy, like Hitler. It can, um, you know, that would be like a shadow, right? Because it wants to feel good and it's not going to give to anybody else or something like that. That would be like the worst part, right? But um, actually Taurus is actually a very giving sign and very beautiful because it wants to enjoy life and it knows that it needs people around it to enjoy life. Every Taurus I've known has, you know, been, a, been just a good like um, person to hang out with and have food with and enjoy life with. And so... To me, because of the times we're in and because of everything else happening, Uranus and Tor retrograde in Taurus is um, really speaking about how can we come up with new ideas independently to make money. One, because Taurus is, rules money. It rules feeling good. It's ruled by Venus, which is money. But not just money, of course. That's just what we've been used to for our exchange, right? Um, how can we feel better? Um, in our lives? How can we live better? How can we become innovative? How can we rebel to what's being pushed on us? Not, 
you know, when you hear the term rebel, it doesn't have to be associated to like awfulness. It's just like what ideas, it's a, it's a genius energy. I said Einstein, right? So what ideas can I come up with as a scientist, as someone who figures out things, um, you know, with technology or, you know, um, that that's innovate, innovative that no one else has thought of to be able to enjoy the physical pleasures of life. Taurus energy is, uh, is fixed earth and it's like, I like to associate it to a tree. It's very stable. It's very, um, as someone with a lot of air energy, I, I really, uh, it depends on, you know, all of the person's other energies, but I really enjoy like a, you know, fiery earth person, right? That holds that Taurus energy, air and fire work well together. And it doesn't feel like too much earth. I felt that before with people like where it's too much earth and I'm like, oh, I can't breathe any there. <laughs> but then if it's like a, a nice combo with fire, it can be that earth energy is very stable. Uh, Taurus is stable like a tree. It's very, which provides like, you know, I like to think of it as like a tree. It's fixed earth and it's uh, providing shade, you know, it's providing shade for everyone to come and sit under, you know. My kids used to have the book, um, The Growing Tree, where the guy, I don't know if you guys have read it, but the guy would come as a boy and, and climb the tree and then as a teenager he'd make out under the tree, you know, and as he got older he'd read a book under the tree and and then he grew into like an old man or whatever, you know, it just shows the different stages and he would just nap under the tree. And um, it was very soothing for him and it like supplied such um, a reservoir of calmness. And I don't know if you guys are tree huggers, but I am, I love hugging trees. <laughs> you can fucking feel the energy and, and just giving them gratitude for cleaning our air and for just nature being so beautiful, you know? Um, but ta so Taurus would be like the, the tree at the picnic providing the shade for everyone to be in and that picnic table is also made out of that tree you know and um it gets associated with a bull because of the constellation but um you know it could be bull bullheaded i suppose um is what they say and, and it can it just depends on the person's astrology because it can as a moon sign it can be very beautiful it, it is exalted in the moon and it can be very um romantic and um, just wanting to wine and dine you and just very much associated to food every Taurus um, person with Taurus energy prominent Taurus energy I've known has um, had you know really just loved enjoying life with the physical element of like food and and get-togethers um, so it's nice I um, I I like to like picture it as that, just that stable good time at the park, you know, barbecuing or, you know, whatever it is, just enjoying life. And so Uranus and Taurus or, or, or retrograde is really causing us to think outside of the box, you know, think outside, that's my moon sign is Aquarius. So thinking the ability to think outside of the box to how we're going to enjoy life right now, you know. And um, as we're doing so, yes, the big picture of the like government and structures are being recreated, but how are we recreating and structuring our own lives to be able to accommodate that? What are we doing? What changes as someone, you know, like we all like to fall back into these routines, you know, and not, and not change. And we're dealing with that's fixed air. Uranus and fixed earth okay so they're very much like whoa, fixed energies of like no I know I know I know I know I know <laughs> and um so but um anyways so it's uh but all that Capricorn energy which I'm referring to Jupiter Pluto and Saturn now Saturn and Jupiter will be out of there um, well, I think Jupe goes out of there in November is when it changes signs. Thank God. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then um, Saturn will change, I believe, January or the end of December. 
and then Pluto until I believe 2023. And, um, but it's been there since 20, uh, 2008 when I believe Obama went into presidency. But anyway, so, but for our personal lives, it's like, okay, what structures are we building? How are we ex building this um, Capricorn? What structures am I building to be innovative, to feel better in my natural life? And we'll throw in the sun and Mercury. And how am I communicating this from my heart space? How am I expressing this from my heart space? You know, so like art, you know, like be innovative, do some art if you're passionate about it, or make a video about something you're passionate about. That's very much your honest um, with Leo and all of this. You know, we've just got to find ways to feel good, to whatever makes us happy, right? And money is involved and relationships are involved. So what else am I missing that's going on? Well, we, you know, generationally we have the um, Neptune, which Uranus is a long one too, but Neptune and, and Pisces, and this is spirituality at its like top. And, um, you know, I keep finding that the light gets divided. It gets divided amongst, um, amongst churches right it gets divided like as an as someone it's hard to call myself an astrologer when you follow an astrologer who's so fucking amazing like i don't even know how he sees it it's just and i'm so super grateful so super grateful um i really truly am grateful that i didn't just he was the first one i came across and but you know when you're meant to do something like you're passionate as fuck about it and there was something about Nostradamus that always stuck in my mind from like school, but I thank God that he was the first one I came across, the Leo King, and not some bullshit ass astrologer like those memes and stuff. You can't trust basic shit. And he is not someone that charges a whole lot. His app is so cheap and you, I mean like it is important. Just like when you get a card reading done, you know, you can kind of intuitively gauge that. And I would say do the same, of course, if it resonates or not. Um, I love his style. He is not a bullshitter. He will tell you straight fucking forward. And what else do we have? What else do we have if we're if we're not shooting it fucking straight? Like if you're gonna like take someone's like knowledge of astrology to share, cool, that's some light work. You're sharing it. But stay in your integrity. Come from truth and fucking like give credit. You know what I mean? Like, don't, like, hide and pretend like you created that shit. Like, that can be a bust really quick. But, you know, like, hey, really, tell me about that. But, oh, and I want to throw in the the nodes of the moon. And this, this is a, no, I would know that, actually. Well, that's just something that he talks about a lot that I don't, you know, I, I look at charts to do it. I mean, you can do astrology in your head. It's just a lot. But, um. Um, the nodes of the moon right now, they're an 18 month thing. That's the part I wouldn't know. I lo I've always given him credit because I just am a good one like that. Yay. <laughs> but, um, it was just, people are deserving of what the fuck they do, you know? But I didn't, I, this is something I didn't know that the nodes change every 18 months, you know, little stuff like that. And, um, um, I was taking his astrology school too, which I love and I need to get back into. Um, anywho, so the nodes, the north node is the one we want to follow. It's how we evolve. When you get back in the south node, we're lying stagnant. We're not evolving. And so this is um, Gemini, north, Sagittarius, south. They're always opposites, okay? So in everything I said about Uranus and Taurus and us being innovative for what feels good and coming from our heart space while well, we had this last week of, of Leo. I'm so grateful for the Leo energy. I wish we could just stay here in this heart space. This has been the hardest fucking summer and craziest transit, but had the most beautiful, magical experiences as well for me personally. I don't know how you guys have been doing it. You know, I'm not on the basic shit. I'm trying to, you know, make sure I... And doing the extraordinary stuff and because I didn't come here for ordinary basic and I know that it's just a matter of reminding myself <laughs> and um, but so it's been pretty extraordinary there's been some great moments but some hard shit and I wish we could just stay in summer <laughs> so now back in Houston I'm like fuck 
it's a steam room. But um, maybe I can pull a spirit animal card. Um, I think I'll make a separate video for the mantras. I don't think my little phone's gonna do that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so the nodes of the moon. So communicate. Communication is Gemini big time. Like these people, no offense to Gemini energy, but you guys are mutable air. So there's ideas going like crazy. You're picking up on other energy. Very communicative. They can be very long winded. Talk with the hands. And um, so it's a good time. It rules technology. And it's a good time to and learning um, local travel that can be like state to state. Good time to learn new things, to communicate differently um, with Neptune and Pisces. That can definitely be like you know going with music. Um, music's always good, but especially with the Leo energy too, because it's usually something from our heart. But we definitely are better off this next, like, probably year. I don't remember exactly when they changed the nodes of the moon. Um, but communication is big right now. So writing, right? Like, I'm going to finish writing books. Like, that first moon sign book I did was, like, four years ago. I started it, and I'm like, shit, why do you get distracted? The time is now. Ugh, Libra energy. <laughs> but, um... Spirit, I thank you for everyone who will see this video and the influence that I can make in people's hearts with every creation I have and every passion I have. And I thank you for all the ones that influence me and inspire me as well in my journey. And I ask, Spirit, that we not worry about things, things like followers, things like getting credit, things like you know, getting credit so we don't give credit. That's just so crazy. God, I ask that we would focus on the character of the person, the character, that our character and our light would come through, that we would not be divided right now. I feel, guys, more than anything, more than anything right now with this new moon, that's, that's, I think it has a big deal to do with love, right? And I'm learning love. Like, I'm one of these people that will push, like, all my love and passion into, like, someone that inspires the fuck out of me, right? Whether I feel divinely connected to you or that piece of painting, right? Which I, I value. I value. I like it like that. Well, in that, my little, like, friend scope is very little. My little love amount is very little. <laughs> Because I found in the past, like, when you give a lot, and especially Libras, like, it's just so draining, you know? So, I like to practice the free world of to each its own, and then you don't have to do anything. But, I'm not going to have a lot of options with giving all of my love to this one person, right? Versus, you know, we're moving into this era of more of, like, a one love, and... I think that's a divine process with meditation and awareness that happens. And, you know, I like to believe that these really intense, passionate loves are the ones that are really coming together right now. And I pray so much. I pray that. Let me pray right now, actually. God, I pray that you protect the divine love. And yes, we all have the divine love of you within us, but I pray that you protect the divine partnerships and that we would all be brought together by way of the heart so that those examples of beautiful um, soul connections would make the impressions. I believe that that's how we're changing the world. Not so much like, of course, it's in what we build, but we've got to build it with the right people and connections and just those examples are how it shows, right? God, I thank you for divine love. I thank you for the soul connections. I thank you for the soul families and tribes. And I pray that you protect us all in this world change. And get us a card. <laughs> and I pray, God, that people would be open to the amazing changes. It is an amazing experience.
<laughs> I got this last night for myself. We got the Peacock Vibrancy. You were born to shine and inspire. Practice humility to avoid jealousy. Be grateful for life. And more good things will come. Be true to yourself and recognize your brilliance. I love you guys. Happy new moon. Check out High Vibe TV. Peace.